For the first 35 years of my life, I did what we are all trained to do. I aimed high with my goals and I worked hard to reach them. I chose a career path at nine years old and I relentlessly pursued it. I was the editor-in-chief of my high school paper and my college paper. I took AP classes in high school, graduated college in three years. Within three years, I married a really nice guy, and I worked my way up through the journalism ranks to an editor job at the largest magazine in the country. I bought a house, and I had saved nearly six figures for retirement. All of that well before I turned 30. Within a few more years, I was self-employed and earning six figures. We built a gorgeous custom home, went on international vacations every year. I drove a shiny red BMW and I wore designer labels. Mine was the kind of life that people envy. It looked great on paper and I wasn't happy. I kept doing and getting more, hoping to fill a void, but it didn't work. I tried hard to be the smartest, the first, the best, but it didn't work. I learned the hard way that playing bigger doesn't always bring joy. In fact, it wasn't until I opted out of this playing bigger mentality that my life expanded in ways that felt good. Today, I have a much smaller home. I drive a 2006 Chevy Suburban and I shop at Goodwill and I haven't seen the beach in a few years. I still have big goals, but I don't pursue them at the cost of sleep, time with my family, or care of myself. By many people's standards, you would say that I am playing smaller, yet my life feels bigger and better than I ever thought possible, much bigger and better than I ever thought possible when I was living that life that others might say was amazing. Perhaps you can relate to this idea of doing all the quote unquote right things, going after more, trying harder, being bigger, better, faster, smarter, having all of the stuff, having a life that looks good on paper, and having it not feel satisfying, having the chase of more feel overwhelming. Maybe you haven't gotten the more and are still holding on to some notion that that's what's going to fill whatever hole you're trying to fill, but you know that the pursuit doesn't feel good. But maybe hearing me say playing smaller still makes you feel really uncomfortable. Might have even made you laugh. Maybe you feel some version of, oh, hell no, I'm not going to settle for less, or you feel sorry for me. I would say all of those reactions are perfectly valid, and in the past, I probably would have felt the same. But before you run for the hills, give me a minute to explain what I mean and just see how it feels. Actually, let me start by saying what I don't mean when I talk about playing smaller. I do not mean shrinking yourself or shrinking your goals. I definitely don't mean accepting less being less or feeling less than. Notice, I didn't say thinking smaller or being smaller. I said playing smaller. By all means, keep those big, hairy, audacious goals. I certainly have mine, if it feels good to you. Playing smaller isn't about giving them up. It's about how you go about getting them. It's about jumping off of that patriarchal hamster wheel of production, productivity, and acquisition. It's about giving up the idea that the reward is what comes after all of the hard work. Playing smaller, as I define it, means slowing down, loving yourself, and cultivating joy in the pursuit. The truth is, I believe, Playing bigger, as it's traditionally defined and as we are all indoctrinated to participate in, is what makes us feel smaller. To be successful in the patriarchal paradigm of more, better, faster, we have to fit into a prescribed mold. We can't simply be ourselves, especially if we are not a white, straight man. We quickly learn that we need to be less feminine, less black, less brown, less loud, less plump, less flashy. And when we can't fit into the mold, and most of us literally can't, some of us figuratively can't, then we are conditioned to believe it's our own fault. There's something wrong with us and the way we're playing bigger and not something wrong with the system. And that leads us thinking smaller about our goals, but more importantly, about ourselves. We begin to believe that we can achieve less and far worse, that we deserve less. Playing bigger sounds expansive, but the truth is, for most of us, 
it's actually quite constricting. Playing smaller, on the other hand, may sound really limiting, but for most people, it's actually a far more abundant and freeing way to live. So next week, I will be back to share more about what playing smaller looks like in practice. But for now, I want to invite you to ponder these questions. What are the ways that you are trying to play bigger? How is that pursuit of playing bigger making you feel smaller? How would it feel to let go of the patriarchal notions of what it means to have more, be more, get more? How would it feel to let go of that pursuit? What might it look like to feel bigger but play smaller?